method of conservatism. And before we start, it may be useful to look at this fairly rough block diagram of conservatism in general. For much of its history from mid-Victorian times onwards, conservatism was pretty much dominated by this blue block um, here. Um, this blue block, most of it represents the one nation traditional paternalistic strand of conservatism who buy into the core themes of human imperfection, veneration of tradition, natural hierarchy, organic society, and a veneration of private property. Uh, the one nation paternalistic conservatism um, we've covered in previous essays before, and you can decide for yourself whether the policies of one nation paternalistic conservatism or principled are pragmatic. Um, and then in Europe and on the continent, the variation of paternalistic conservatism in the form of Christian democracy, which is superficially very similar to the UK version, but with less emphasis on the free market and more emphasis on what's called the social market, a market which can generate wealth in order to um, provide strong public services to maintain social cohesion. Um, within this blue block that buy into pure and perfection tradition and so forth, there has always been uh, an authoritarian strand, a small substrand. Um, conservatives were never quite reconciled to democracy and post-Israeli um, social reform, but for much of the um, century from um, 1840 up to the 1960s or 70s, they were very much a, a, a minor strand of um, human imperfection, tradition, natural hierarchy, uh, organic block of conservatism. Um, as we talked about in class, conservatism has also had, certainly from the late Victorian times onwards, another minor strand who were essentially classical liberal in their outlook. Rather than human imperfection, they believed in rationalism. Um, rather than natural hierarchy, they believed in meritocracy. Rather than organic society, they believed in atomism. Um, so they're essentially classical liberal in outlook. Uh, but it, like the authoritarian strand for much of conservatism's existence, they were a minor strand. So what came to happen in the late 1970s is those two minor strands came together in this grouping called the New Right, the neoconservatives and the neoliberals. And this combination, particularly under Mrs. Thatcher in the UK from 1979 onwards, came to displace this uh, long-term dominance of the traditional one nation or paternalistic strands. So in this video, then, we're going to look at um, this new right, the neoliberals and the neoconservatives. Um, the neoliberals are essentially libertarians, very similar to extreme classical liberals, and they focus on the market and the morality of the market, which alongside police and courts, can also be an instrument to maintain social stability. Even Burke, long associated as the father of traditional conservatism and pragmatism and lack of dogma, um, did write in favor of the market, suggesting that the laws of the market themselves were, were natural laws. It was part of human nature. However, neoliberal conservatism is essentially um, a throwback to classical liberal ideas the unfettered free market, um, the minimal state, the night watchman state, and Adam Smith's invisible hand. Now, the neoliberals advocate the greatest possible economic liberty and the least possible government intervention uh, in the economy. Uh, they are market fundamentalists. They, they go perhaps even further than, than classical liberals would. And in attacking what they saw as uh, excessive government interference in the market, Particularly in the post-war period, the neoliberals had uh, particularly Keynes in their sight, or Keynesian economics. Uh, Keynesian economics was essentially an argument for government intervention in times of economic recession. Um, government would intervene in the economy or pump money into the economy through lowering taxes or increasing spending in order to reflate the economy and create employment. Neoliberals essentially completely disagreed with this and seek to, to dismantle it. Um, the high priest of, of neoliberal economics from Chicago, the Chicago School, was Milton Friedman. And Friedman argued that there was a natural rate of unemployment, uh, which was beyond the ability of government to influence or control. And Keynesianism, or government intervention, had merely led to damaging inflation. 
if you're studying economics, you probably do Friedman's ideas and particularly his advocation of monetarism in more detail. But for ideologies, essentially, you would note that Friedman uh, led the attack on government intervention or Keynesian economic management, arguing there's a natural rate of unemployment. Essentially, Friedman's arguing for a minimal state government to withdraw from any interference in the economy. The second high priest of, of uh, the new right or the neoliberal new right was uh, the Austrian von Hayek and his famous book was The Road to Serfdom and again he warned of the danger of tyranny that he felt inevitably results from government control over economic decision making through central planning. He argued that the abandonment of individualism and classical liberalism inevitably leads to a loss of freedom and the creation of an oppressive society. And Hayek's argument, this idea of the road to serfdom, um, also helped to form an attack on the other side of, of modern liberalism or social democracy, in particular the, the welfare state. And again, you could say the person they had in their sights was, was Beveridge, or the, the Beveridge settlement post-war of the welfare state. So as well as the economic um, attack on the post-war consensus, so the modern liberal settlement, the new right also objected to the welfare state on moral grounds, and that the welfare state had merely created a culture of dependency. In an interesting uh, turnaround, um, or an interesting take on, on the social welfare, which modern liberals saw as enabling positive freedom, um, the new right argued that welfare was a cause of disadvantage, not a remedy for disadvantage. For Hayek in particular, collectivism in both the economy and the welfare state was merely creating a new form of serfdom, this title in the book, The Road to Serfdom, um, where all collectivism had done in the economy and, and in the, the state had merely replaced the old lords of feudal times and created a new kind of or a new body of serfs or people who were totally dependent uh, on the state. Welfare also relieved women of dependence on men and was a major cause of family breakdown, helping to create an underclass of single mothers and fatherless children. Neoliberalism also stressed the case for welfare as the enemy of individual rights, condemning all policies of welfare and redistribution as a violation of property rights. Again, in Noyes' um, famous phrase, all taxation for redistribution was merely legalized theft. The government was putting their hand into your pocket to taking your hard-earned money to redistribute it among those who didn't deserve it. Again, this echoed the notion of Macpherson's possessive individualism of the classical liberal era. Overlapping this was the, the neoconservative strand of the, the new right, and the classical, the neoliberal strand is a throwback to classical liberalism. Uh, the neoconservative strand is, is a throwback to a pre disraelian style of authoritarian conservatism with a strong emphasis on order and discipline. And the key word you can focus your arguments or discussion on neoconservatives are, are permissiveness. Um, the term originally in the 60s would have had a positive connotation. Permissiveness was about liberalization, the willingness to allow people to make their own moral choices. Um, but in the hands of the neoconservatives, permissiveness becomes uh, a negative term, the idea of the permissive society. And they argue that during the 60s and 70s, this newfound permissiveness came to be associated with those a cause of antisocial behavior, crime, delinquency, decline of public morality, and a respect for authority. Neoconservatives therefore emphasize the restoration of social order and public morality by restoring authority and imposing social discipline. Again, in particular emphasis on the family and the nuclear family as one of the main authority systems, which this permissive society and this liberal legislation from the 60s and 70s had undermined. Just as the neoliberals can be described as very dogmatic or principled in their approach, they stick to classical liberal principles, equally the neoconservatives can be described as dogmatic or principled. Uh, they take a Manichean view of everything, everything is in black or white, authority is good, lack of authority is bad, order is good, 
lack of order is bad, there are good lifestyles, there are bad lifestyles, there are good states, there are bad states. So it's a very dogmatic, a very principled approach. So in summary then, the neoliberal new right adopt a very principled, dogmatic approach to society and particularly the economy, drawing on classical liberal principles, free market, minimal state, laissez-faire. The neo Conservative new right also take a principled dogmatic approach to society and particularly social and moral issues and take a Manichian black and white dogmatic view. However, and this is a subtle or slightly sophisticated point which can be used to impress examiners, it can also be argued that the new right was pragmatic in the sense that they only came to prominence as the social democratic or modern liberal consensus had in effect broken down in the 70s. And their approaches, neoliberal, neoconservative, were simply a pragmatic response to a failed system. Interesting argument, not sure how far you can take it. Further in summary then, going back to our block diagram, for much of its existence, conservatism as an ideology was dominated by, um, in particular, this gentle blue block here, the one nation paternalistic pragmatic conservatism of post-Israeli, with a principle of pragmatic, known as Christian democracy uh, in the Europe. Um, however, from the 70s onwards, um, that strand increasingly came to be displaced by this new combination of uh, a minor authoritarian strand within traditional conservatism and this other strand that was dormant within conservatism, this um, classical liberal or libertarian strand, which opposed, if you like, traditional conservatism, seen as rational rather than human perfection, meritocratic rather than natural hierarchy, atomistic rather than organic society. The new right then can be characterized essentially as a marriage between a uh, shotgun wedding between the self-regulating free market individual of Adam Smith and the authoritarianism of, of De Maestre. Uh, or there's a nice succinct title of a book by a writer called Andrew Gamble writing in 1988 on Thatcherism and the title of his book was The Free Economy and the Strong State which sums up the neoliberal plus the neoconservative approach. The twin targets of the new right were the social democratic or modern liberal consensus from the post-war period, essentially the increased role of the state in economic and social life. New conservatives buy into organicism, human perfection, tradition, authority. Their focus is restoring traditional morality and authority in society following the permissiveness of the 60s. Um, there's a moral case against welfare, which had trapped individuals and families in a culture of dependency, unable to reach their full potential. There's also an economic case against the welfare state, as it was paid for out of taxation, which Noizic said was legalized theft and infringement of property rights. The neoliberal strand, atomistic, rational, meritocratic, uh, belief in freedom, focus on essentially classical liberal principles, restoring the free market, laissez faire, removing government involvement and interference in the economy, and promotion of negative freedom. However, the both strands, how, although they differ in many things, do have some things in common. Both can argue for a strong but minimal state, or rolling back the state, both in economic terms of economic intervention for the neoliberals and social intervention for the neoconservatives. Both argue for strong discipline in society, whether it's imposed by the market or the state. Both are reactionary in the sense that they hark back to a, a golden age of Victorian values, you know, economic and moral rectitude. And both are can be seen as both being principled and dogmatic in their approach.